Name and Passion. role. Uh, my name is Blake Ferris, and I play Gareth. And, you know, you worked with Jane previously on Meth Head. And, and so did that influence your decision at all to come on board and, and take the role of Gareth? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had a phenomenal experience on Meth Head, and so it was just kind of a no-brainer. What about that experience really kind of stands out in your mind in terms of working with Jane? I mean, first of all, I think the role that I played in Meth Head was just one of my favorite roles that I've, I've ever gotten to play. I fell in love with it as soon as I read it, and even just working with Jane in the audition room was, was a great experience. Ambulance. Yeah, I know. That happened with the Riley, too. Mm -hmm. But that answer didn't matter. We're still going, so. Come on. <laughs> Die already. No, I'm just kidding. Wars, wars. Just start at the top. Okay. Yeah, start at the top. Yeah, start at the top. Uh, working on Meth Head, uh, how did it influence your decision then to come on board with Crazy Bitches? Yeah, I mean, it was just kind of a no-brainer. I, I had such a phenomenal experience on on Meth Head. Um, the role I played, Dusty, was as soon as I read it, just something that I, I fell in love with and was 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 excited to audition for and uh, you know working with Jane in the room in the audition room I was like she's she's like a director's actor and she knows you know how to talk to people and uh, so I was, I was ecstatic when I got the part and uh, we got to collaborate on that and so um, when Crazy Bitches came along um, you know I think everybody was excited to kind of uh, wash the meth out of their hair and uh, you know let it down and have some fun. Right. When you first read the story and you read the script, uh, what did you think in general about about the story? I thought it was just really fun. It's just like uh, it, it's it's kind of tongue in cheek and um, you know uh, making a nod to the genre, but also doing it in its own way. And um, I'm excited to see it. Um, it when you look at the role of Gareth, he has a particular function. That function is a bit oversexed and sex yeah. crazy. Yeah. And so was that, that must have been fun. I would think that must have been fun to do. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's a great kind of very simple uh, objective to play with as an actor. And um, yeah, he was, he, was, he was, I don't know, I very, very quickly understood him. How does it feel to be the object of affection for a group of uh, women? That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, you know, like there's just there's uh, there's only uh, there's only fun in that. When you read Crazy Bitches and you'll see it, but when you read it and you think about it, do you think women's movie, guys' movie? I I definitely think it can be both. I mean, I guess that's one of the perks of a something that you know kind of swings uh, in the lesbian direction is that you know I think like girls kind of like it and guys definitely like it and um, I don't know everything in between so I think there's there's something there for everybody well, you make sure you throw in like I think crazy bitches oh. is a cool you know because we're gonna cut Bob out of this right okay yeah okay right yeah. that's okay I didn't explain it to you at the first but in any case move it on uh -huh. crazy bitches a, builds itself as a horror comedy and that's kind of a very odd uh, thing and an odd mix to play with, horror and comedy at the same time. How does Crazy Bitches pull both those things off? The fright and the scare factor of horror and the laughs and the jokes of comedy. Yeah, I think it's cool that Crazy Bitches plays uh, with comedy and horror because I think both of them are kind of two of the most primal things that you know we have as humans, you know, being scared. Uh, and you know being scared and laughing I just I don't think it gets more primal than that so uh, putting them together is uh, I think odd but cool um, and uh, I think that it's it, it does it, do, it did a really great job with that in the script and I, I had fun kind of playing with that line as an actor between making it funny but also leaving that element of uh, mystery and danger there for people to wonder about. You know, we've had a lot of women through here today, and I ask them, every one of them, uh, their thoughts on this, and I'm very curious to get a guy's perspective. 
Uh, when I say the word bitch, what do you think about the word bitch? Is it a good word? Is it a negative word? What What's going on with bitch? The word bitch, um, I think, uh, I think it's changing. I think that the word bitch has kind of become, has ameliorated in value, you know, it's not always a, a pejorative thing anymore, and I think that, you know, you know, there's certainly a way you can, I think everything is just in the way that it's said, right, and like, crazy bitches, you know, I think sounds like fun, but, you know, if you like, you're like, you're a bitch, like, you know, that can be very offensive still. But if you're you're like shut up, bitch, like you know what I mean. Like I can't probably pull that kind of thing off. But uh, if you're a girl, you definitely can. And uh, yeah, I don't know. For a guy, I think you you actually have to be careful because you get into like misogynistic territory. You know, you're like yeah, I was talking to this bitch, and that's you can't. I don't know. I I can't pull it off. Maybe certain guys can. I don't think I can. All right. Uh, a lot of the questions have been about vanity, you know. Like, I think guys can be just as vain as girls, personal opinion. Uh, what's your take on that? Can guys be just as vain as women? Vanity? No, I'm, I mean, I don't know anything about vanity. Uh, no, yeah, definitely guys can be as vain as girls. Uh, I know firsthand from having worked on a soap opera, I mean, like, you know, you can just, like, I've had conversations with people who are literally, like, kind of talking to you, like, and they're kind of like, uh-huh, yeah, totally. They're like, right, right, and uh, what, what's my line after that? And they're, you know, that's where they are. What's your biggest vanity? What's my biggest vanity? Uh, I, I, I think it is, I think it, you, I, I, well, I'll say this, it's the thing I'm most neurotic about is my hair, because I, I, I just think, like, you know, sometimes you wake up and you're like, wow, I'm looking good. And certain days you're like, there's nothing I can do to make myself look good. And I think it's all kind of happening up here. <laughs> you know, you mentioned the soap a little bit earlier. What's going on after the soap? What are you doing? Uh, I'm doing basically mostly um, writing stuff. Uh, I just got hired to write a Lifetime movie. And uh, a film that I wrote, um, we're gearing up to go into production, uh, hopefully by the end of the year. So we're making offers to actors, and uh, I'm co-producing that as well. So uh, those are kind of taking up my time in a full-time job kind of a way. Mm -hmm. You know, writing's really interesting. I think, you know, I, I'm curious to know why you chose, as opposed to just acting, acting, why you chose to go out and try to write something yourself and then and get hired. I think that's great. Talk, talk about that. I've always, I've always written kind of uh, more non-seriously, just as, as, I mean, even growing up, look, I would write plays and convince my friends to be in them and uh, write movies and drag, you know, just kind of, I, I liked being creative in that way, but acting was always kind of the main focus, and, um, but it's always been there, like even in college, like I ended up doing a lot of playwriting, I studied playwriting as well, and, um, you know, but I, I started writing this script with a friend from college um, on the side, just to kind of keep my brain activated in that way, it was really just kind of for enjoyment mostly, and then we kind of got more serious about it and then things started happening with that movie and then this opportunity from another friend came up to write this lifetime project and I was like, you know, screw it, I'm going to fly to New York and, and pitch on, on writing this and uh, I enjoyed it and now I have an agent in the mix uh, writing wise and so I don't know, it's kind of one of these uh, natural progression things and I think because I don't uh, have as much of a stake in it, like I'm, w I'm more relaxed about it, and so I think it's always an easier way to attract work is when you don't care. You know, do you think about, when you think about your career, and you think about post days, do you have a particular plan? Do you have a particular track you want to take? Or is it just, you know, I'm going to take what comes along? Well, how do you, do you chart a course? How do you do that? I think as far as career goes, you always have to chart a course and then stay open to life and, and the opportunities that kind of uh, come your way. I mean, as an actor, you don't really have all that much agency in terms of what you do next because it's contingent on 
the roles that you're either offered or auditioning for. And so you can, you can come up with an idea about the type of thing you want to do and the, the direction that you want to go, um, but you can't control what projects uh, come your way. Um, you know, after, after days, I, uh, I think kind of similar, similar to, I think, what Jane wanted to do after Method. Like, working on a soap opera is pretty, I mean, it's exhausting just from a, a work standpoint, but it's also emotionally kind of taxing. And I really, I really want to do a comedy. I'd love to do like a, a, a sitcom. So I, I'm, I've, I've kind of told my team that that's something that I'm interested in pursuing is, is kind of doing some, some funnier stuff. But I'm also like kind of uh, a moth to a flame with um, dramatic stuff too. Like, I, I mean, I, I love doing everything. So I don't know. I mean, the writing thing has been something that just has kind of taken me and it's become pretty immersive and that's basically what I'm doing, you know, during during the course of the week. And, you know, I just got an offer on like a movie thing and I haven't read it yet, but you know, these things come up and if I like it I'll do it and uh probably I'll just do it. Um <laughs> but but uh you know, I mean like I you know, basically I think I'm looking for another series. I'd like to do uh another series and um, you know, just basically stay open to, to, to what comes and hope for the best. Okay. Two more questions, kind of basic questions. You know, Meth Head and working with Jane, you talked a little bit about it, but, but talk about working with Jane on Crazy Bitches and, and has she changed at all or what's great about working with her too? I think, uh, you know, because Jane was an actor, uh, there's just an inherent language that you speak well, with, with people that are good at what they do, and Jane is, uh, where, where, you know, there's just a, a vernacular that, that they understand about human behavior. And I think that, you know, it was, I mean, you can usually identify it really quickly with, with people, and that was something that um, I think Jane and I, a language that we, you know, were able to speak really early on, and, and, um, and through the course of Method, you know, you, you learn to, to trust somebody. I was really happy with uh, you know, the way uh, she, she directed me in that and the way the, the performances in that movie came out. And so, you know, you might like somebody, but it's not until you really see, you know, what they do that you can really kind of trust them. And, and the more experiences you've had with them, you know, the more that, that trust builds. And so, you know, we had that shorthand on, on Crazy Bitches and, um, you know, uh, Crazy Bitches was kind of looser and more fun and my roles will, a little less. I mean, both actually roles had, had a lot of uh, kind of lightheartedness and and uh, fun in them. But uh, I think Gareth probably to a further extent. There's not the like you know the other side of the coin, or at least in the film, the other side of his psychology isn't explored. Like you know, it's not like and the reason that he's doing this is because he's a heroin addict. Um, so and that was something that we did in Method. So I don't know. This this was it was like kind of easy and fun, and I, it, it was just like a it was a really great experience. Okay, and last one. Just when I say popcorn movie, <laughs> what comes into your mind? What do you think a popcorn movie is? Oh, uh, I just saw a popcorn movie. I just saw Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise. It's awesome, uh, and it's like the kind of movie that you don't really have to, you know, like. Even, like, there is emotional stuff, there's, like, an emotional story, but you, you kind of, it's, it's more about enjoying yourself. Like, it, you know, you're not going to go to, like, a Lars von Trier movie and, like, be, like, stuffing your face with popcorn because, you know, you need to, like, focus on the art and think about big ideas. And, and that, those are actually most of the movies I see. But every now and then I'm like, I'm going to go see, like, a blockbuster or, like, a horror movie or, a, you know, like, Neighbors. That one, I didn't like that one that much, but... But it's that, that kind of idea. You just go to be entertained and have fun. And I think that's a, it's, it's just a great thing that, that, that movies do. Do you think Crazy Bitches is a popcorn movie? I, I, I hope so, yeah. I, I, I'm excited. I, I hope, I'll probably get some popcorn tonight. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. That's yeah. it. Yeah, great. Awesome. Thanks very right. much. <laughs> that's a wrap. Right? Alas, that's a wrap. And then we're just going to all chat. I'm gonna, <laughs> we're going to do me real fast and then we're okay. going to have a little chat about... <laughs>